the world, you see a, a problem with our police system. Um, uh, just yesterday or the other day, the data came out for the number of killings um, that have uh, been done by police, whether they were justified or not. I'm looking at data from across the na across the, the world, and police across the world have found a much better way to deal with their problems. Um, here, we, we've we killed children. Um, and I, when I say we, I guess I mean that system that's in place that, that makes it okay. Um, somebody might want to come and hold this. I, I hate for all this to go away. Um, thank you. Um, a system that makes it okay to just walk up or just uh, to victimize these children when 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 police come on the scene. What I'm going to do, um, what I'd like to do, is call out every name uh, of the, the the children represented here. We're doing this is a national um, day, and it, it, the main just behind it is Samir uh, Samir Rice. There hasn't really been justice for him yet. Um, I'm not sure if uh, what the, the, the grand jury process is uh, for him or if that's even come out, but um, God forbid it be the same thing that you know uh, occurred with Eric Garner and uh, Michael uh, Brown, especially when we, we know that the police officer that shot him was not even supposed to be on duty. Um, May what we do here today honor his parents, um, honor um, and for all of these uh, these children that have been killed. Um, may what we do today honor them. So I'd like to uh, I'd like to call out the names and possibly read a little bit of their story, and then we have uh, we're going to have some people come up and speak some spoken word. We're going to have some uh, the reading the reading of the names. I guess I'm doing this a little bit out of order, it looks like. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and read the names first, and then we'll have the people come up and speak. And, and, and then we'll, we'll have a brief period where people can come up and say things, because I know there's things on your heart that you want to say. They say it ain't enslavement. And everywhere I look, I see concrete plantations where my people bend their backs to pick cotton off the pavement. I see slave labor in the form of nine to five jobs. Black children shot by the long arm of the government that gives automatic weaponry to the public. Apartments without lights plunged in the darkness because rent costs too damn much in the gutter. Why is it considered affirmative action when I get hired? Dear Mr. Policeman, please don't shoot me in the street and leave me there because the judge will clear your charges. I am unarmed. I uh, surrender. Shackles on the wrists of the oppressed. Life sentences to death. And First Amendment rights violated on crime sites. I can't breathe, said Eric Gardner. Rodney King beat with a nightstick. They say it ain't brutality. Yet everywhere I look, I see the casualties of a war on races. Blacks with whip lashes on their backs due to the actions of a racist. What's a racist? The embodiment of hate for cultures, traditions, and nations. They call it law in some cases in the favor of those that don't look like me. Yet it separates us all. It's apartheid. It's apartheid when Tamir Rice can be killed because he doesn't appear white. It's apartheid when Eric Gardner's murderer gets pardoned. It's apartheid when Mike Brown gets shot by an off-duty cop and not found for hours. And they say it ain't enslavement. They say it ain't enslavement. Yet everywhere I look, I see concrete plantations where my people bend their backs to pick cotton off the pavement. Following our recorded killings here in San Diego and nationwide, Tamir Rice. Ayana Stanley Jones, Andy Lopez, Dakota Bright, Deonta Farrow, Nicholas Hayward, Cameron Tillman, Matthew McCloskey, Xavier McDonald, Christiana Coinart, 
Jessica Hernandez, Lockin McDonald, in San Diego, Ibrahim Hassan, Martin Santos Castro, Jr., Robert Screen Escondido, No Rojas, Guillermo Martinez, Quincy Albert Daniels, Luis Manuel Lopez, William Everett Banker Jr., Isaac Ibeck, Sergio Garado Rodriguez, Sensory Holloway, Jamal O'Day, Jeffrey Bray, Wayne Douglas Holden, Jonathan Vasquez, Anthony Tumania, Daniel Sisson, Roger Belair, Edwin Baba Gutierrez, Elwood Edwards, Giacomo Gargioni, Gregory Michael Bardo, Leslie Landersman Escondido, Lionel Hernandez Guerrero, Michael Sean Kyle. All of these are under the age of 23. These are our stolen youth. These are our stolen lives. If you haven't lit your candle, go ahead and light it. And we're supposed to have another poem now, but this seems like the proper time to do our four minutes of silence for the, time, uh, the amount of time that uh, Tamir lay on the ground. And while you're, uh, while we're standing here waiting for the four minutes, I just want you to think about ways that you can kind of get involved to stop this kind of thing from happening again. And I'll search your hearts. Um, if you're too comfortable, if you're, if you're, if you're, if you're too busy to do this, just understand that this injustice can come to your doorstep. We're going to start our four minutes of silence now. Not really important. I'm just a common 
retired worker, train operator. I was raised in Oakland, California, West Oakland, California. My first culture is black. I'm a Chicano. And with many of you and others, we work with a group now called Acción Anyotinapa. 43 students murdered in Guerrero, Mexico. We have to answer our own prayers. We have to take power to end this carnage. I'm not speaking to bankers or the cops or the wealthy. We're speaking to each other. Know this, sisters and brothers, especially cop dumb, cracker cop dumb. Everything south of the Alamo is us. And we have some experience with cops. These are your allies for the future. The more we get together, the better chance our kids are going to have. Thank you. Hi. Um, my name is Hope Middleton. And um, I came tonight because I met the organizer of this nationally at the Four Mile March that she organized on Martin Luther King Day. We marched from here all the way down to MLK Library, four miles in peace. Um, there were hundreds of us. Um, and I was walking with this very quiet, humble woman. And um, I said, hey, what are you doing here? She said, oh, I just organized this. <laughs> so, you know, the, the heroes are not always the ones we hear about. But I, I am, she's over here crying. She baked the cookies you ate, there's coffee. She organized this whole thing. So she's going to speak to us and tell us what's on her heart. Um, she's a mother of four, and I think to hear her voice would do all of us a service I tonight. Agree. I agree. Her name is Mrs. Jamilo Young. I just thank you so much for coming out here. I was really worried that it would just be about five of us. <laughs> so I'm grateful for the souls that are here. Um, we had probably 22 other cities today and yesterday nationwide uh, take part in vigils for Tamir and the stolen children. And um, I think, you know, I'm new to activism and what brought me here probably is being a parent and just knowing, just having that empathy, knowing that someone has lost a child. Uh, a parent should never have to bury a tr child. We shouldn't have to worry about our children playing at a rec center. Tamir went to the rec center almost daily. It was his second home. So because no one knew him, there wasn't any community policing, no one knew him, and he was there alone. We got different stories in the media, and we need the media to take responsibility for their reporting. We need the truth, because too many people are asleep and they do not understand what our children are facing every day. We do <coughs> live in a racist society. And many people of color are judged. When I did bring some, I'm sorry I'm speaking from the heart, I did bring some articles, they're kind of messed up, but there are some articles and studies available that show and prove that a black man, woman, or child are more likely, maybe 21 times more likely to be shot by police. Why is that? We have to get to the root of that issue. We can't just say we got a re law enforcement reform. We need humanity reform. We really do. We need people to stop blaming children for toy guns that they sell in the store. It wasn't his fault. He traded his cell phone that day for a toy gun. 
why would someone call 911? Why would the 911 operator decide, oh, I'm not going to mention to the police that he probably is a child, that it's probably a fake gun. What they're going to just mention is a black male. Tamir was described as a 20-year-old male. Look at this photo. Does that look like a 20-year-old male to you? We are not talking about just Tamir. There are several. Nicholas Hayward, his father's in New York. They had a vigil today. He was shot in a, st he was shot in a stairwell for a toy gun. Cameron Tillman, we don't have a lot of information about him. He passed away in uh, September. Also, a toy gun. Hmm. Ayana, sleeping on her couch in her home for a botched raid. This cannot happen in our country. This is not acceptable. We look up to police to protect and serve, not to murder, rush to judgment, take our children from us, take our family members from us. I do this because I have children and I, I can imagine, I can, I can feel the loss. And I need all of us to come together. We need everyone to understand that we need better policing. We need to shut down this racist system that automatically finds people that look like me and some of you guilty as charged before we step on the street. That's all I have to say. Thank you for coming. Good evening. Hi, my name is Darwin Fishman. I just want to take a minute to talk about Tori Robinson. Let's bring it home from local. I'm a professor at UC Riverside, and I've been here about a year and a half. And so one of the things I get worried about with San Diego, and I appreciate Dee laying this out for the national scene, what's been happening in half Americans, do we lose sight of what's happening here locally? So I want to just take a minute to talk about Tori Robinson. And if, for those of you that aren't familiar with him, Tori Robinson was driving home from Kwanzaa. Um, December 26th last year, pulled over by the Sheriff's Department in Lemon Grove, driving on Massachusetts Avenue. It's very personal for me because I have a friend that lives off of Massachusetts Avenue and I know exactly where this occurred. When the Sheriff's Department was behind him, he decided to pull over in a well-lit area and not stop immediately. He went to a gas station. Because of that, that pissed off the Sheriff's Department and they felt the need to come out when they went to get him with their guns out. Um, like seven officers with their guns out. They had him spread eagle. Once he was there, they jumped him, they handcuffed him. He spent, ended up spending 17 days in jail. The initial charge from the Sheriff's Department was a broken tail light. And what's really important is that the fact that I'm even sharing this story with you is extraordinary because this happens on a regular basis and it happens in the San Diego area. Any one of those sheriffs that pulled out their gun on Troy Robinson could have easily killed him with a hair trigger. And the fact is that this is the kind of danger that many of us live with on a regular basis. And Tamir, as it says in Cleveland, we have to also understand what's taking place here in San Diego. If we don't have the headlines, we don't have the body count, it doesn't mean that that danger is any less real here. It's extremely important that we understand that and that there's also real cases. Tory Robinson, we've had protests, we've had demonstrations. They dropped the felony charges finally, but they're still gonna to go to trial with misdemeanor, um, misdemeanor infraction charges. His court case starts on March 3rd with uh, jury selection, and it's the county, um, it's the, the county courthouse. And he's looking for support, and we're hoping that if we can get enough people out, we put enough pressure on that they'll completely drop the charges. So again, as we come out, I really worry about these events in San Diego where there's so much happy talk. Uh, the reality is, and also I really appreciate uh, Catherine, Catherine for work on this, there are very few organizations that are highlighting these cases and bringing attention to what's taking place locally. And just one other thing I want to say that strikes me, again, coming here just about a year and a half, coming from Washington, D.C., one of the things I'm really surprised by is that one of the real dangers with the San Diego Police Force here, and I've talked to people in the police force about this, I have a friend that's a retired Sheriff's Department officer, he's a Puerto Rican, and he's talked about this. He didn't get military training. One of the things that makes San Diego distinct is how many police officers come directly from the military. And a lot of them, their training is to shoot first. And they've done things like whether it's in Afghanistan or Iraq, where that's their first training. And that's why you're more likely, and this is his argument, once he's retired from the Sheriff's Department, is to get fatalities from those officers and excessive force. So I really hope as we, we recognize and we honor those that have been passed, 
and part of this national movement that we also pay attention to what's taking place here locally. And again, Troy Robinson's court case starts March 3rd, that Tuesday. They're asking people to come out 7.30 in the morning. His court case will start at 8.30 in the morning. Uh, thank you. I look around, I don't see race. I see people coming together for a cause. Whether you're a parent now, or have been in the past, or will be in the future, I am. I've got a 12-year-old daughter. I sleep better at night knowing that she's safe. But I can't even fathom having to worry about my child stepping outside of the door and being attacked by the cops. For what? Being a kid? Being in a neighborhood? Just trying to live your life? Like Tamir going to the rec center. That's all stuff we did as a kid. We go out, we play with our friends. Never did I ever think in my head when I was a kid that any of my friends, white, black, brown, I had friends of all races. I used to live in North Park. I used to live up 54th area. Did I ever think that any of my friends were gonna have to worry about that? No. I grew up in the 80s. It wasn't as bad as it is now. And it shouldn't be as bad as it is now. We shouldn't have to worry as parents that something like this could ever happen to our kids. Our country is founded on freedom, supposedly. Supposedly. Not the freedom to kill, not the freedom to shoot, the freedom to live your life loving and caring for each other, being able to help each other when times are bad. That's who we are tonight. I'm glad that as many people came tonight as did, considering that it was a wet day today. Every person who's here is a blessing. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, Mr. Corvio um, informed everyone about the struggle that is going on across borders. Um, really quickly, I just want everyone to, actually before I even say that, uh, Captain Neslet, I hope you're hearing this since you're in the park. Um, we're, we're organizing peacefully, having a vigil, and don't understand why you're here, but I hope this is sinking in. Uh, so possibly you can tell your co your coworkers and colleagues and so we don't want any more stolen lives. We don't want any more stolen children and stolen youth. You guys did the same me? thing when you're but uh, so you got shot. I'm wearing I'm wearing this cap and it says 43. As Rick was talking about, there are 43 students, an indigenous group that we're looking to, because lack of education, lack of funding for education, because their government will not fund where they live and who they are. They were activists and they disappeared. They were taken alive and five months later, we still don't know of their, uh, of their whereabouts. So on January 28th, if the news if the news decided to forget them, we are going to bring it to NBC. We will start from the Mexican consulate. March. February. February. I'm sorry. We will march on uh, from the Mexican Mexican consulate to the NBC building. I'd like to give that these are also stolen lives, and police corruption crosses borders. This is state corruption. This is colonial, this is form of colonization in our communities. Who, what, the group who handed them over was the police to the Guerrero gang. So this happens everywhere. Who went inside? Yep. Who went inside? So 
hopefully uh, everyone here uh, can and join us on that day, uh, 1 p.m. Mexican consulate. And I just wanted to do a shout out for the 40, 43 students of Voice in Napa. Uh, not that much older from the children that uh, we gave a little while ago. How's everybody doing? Thank you guys for having me. I'm sorry for being late. Uh, and I actually went to another park down the street. I thought it was over there, but my name is Inside Neon to Speaks. I'm a spoken word for the Democratic Republic of Congo. Um, here from the military. I was uh, uh, came to San Diego from the military. So I would like to present a spoken word poetry piece. Uh, it's entitled No Justice, No Peace. Uh, but before I do that, I would like to invite everybody out to SDSU Tuesday night. Um, at 5 o'clock, I'll be showing a documentary I put together entitled The Nigger Project. And it's about the N-word and what it means to our society and how it affects us uh, psychologically and, and pretty much our every way, every day of life. So um, please come out, SDSU, if you would like more information, please see me afterwards. I can get that to you. Uh, this piece is entitled No Justice, No Peace. <coughs> no justice, no, no peace. peace. No silence in our streets. Our heroes are those single mothers fighting for relief. Our heroes are those, single, those faithful fathers struggling trying to get a gig. Children's mother fighting you and you just want to raise a kid. You might have done a bit but learn from your mistakes. But to the system, that means nothing when progress is your escape. But keep striving, keep pushing. You're gonna walk into your destiny when you feel like all your hopes was to us fighting for survival, it blinds us to a peaceful street. But peace can keep our minds off of the basic need to eat. So drink from the fountain of life. Take the bread and the message of my delivery and you'll never go hungry. Listen to the sound of my voice. It's in the depth of these baritone barrage of tones that edify the blind. Healing of our minds is what I'm asking you to strive for. Listen to our children. They're the ones we stay alive for. And they're asking us for peace. Thank you. Oh, yeah. I'll, do, I'll do one more real quick. Uh, that was too short. Okay. <laughs> uh, this next piece is entitled uh, Sociological State of Mind. I was a sociology student at City College, and this piece is based off of the, the studies I was doing at the time. It's called Sociological State of Mind. I sit and wonder why our way of lives is disappearing. We're incoherent, but we're focused on our Holy Spirit. You're not hearing now. You can't even see. In your book, your father says it. Why profess your love for me if you can't see the world around you? Tears on a ground to lift my brothers up. I'm not going to leave you where I found you, nah. So live, my people live. You won't learn to take if we all decided to give. You won't learn to break if we all decided to blend. You'll learn to create if we all define what it is. But instead, we stay deaf, dumb, and ignorant, sticking to a regiment, seeing, not believing, not agreeing with the evidence. We got a black president, yeah, but if you understood his messages, hope for us has never been there. And I'm speaking to my brothers out here. Go out and get it. It's grinding time. Nothing can rewind the time. I help you get yours. You help me get mine so we both can shine. Sit at the table so we both can die. There's a plethora of those confined. And it's impossible for them to use the benefits of spoken mind. So while we're out here in so-called freedom world, open your eyes. Knowledge of self is what you're supposed to find. We kill each other for secrets, man. But the truth is, if you're tired of this weakness, then you need to defeat this mentality that Africa is backwards and the connections that we have with them will never come back again. Understand, we are one people, we're equal, and don't be fools to believe that my way of life is beneath you, because it's not. And if we knew it, we would get off the block. If we knew it, our addictions to reality stops. Because what you're thinking is reality is actually not. Because the reality is some have and some have not. The reality is some pass and some have blocks. So while we're chasing for a white man's spot, let me explain. Race is a social structure that's created a game that disguises the people playing and we're one and the same. It's a shame. So stay together, never stay in a lane. Because separated black people lost before we knew we were playing. We've been one with our creator way before we've been paying into a church. I'm just relaying it to the church. I'm saying to the church the same message Christ Jesus gave. But y'all reject me because the slaves never believe a slave. Now see what's being made is laws. 
So racism is submitted and pinned. A social class system has come of age. We all should be enraged because everybody's broke. The middle class is disappearing, now we're everybody's joke. Money separates our hope, but hope is what we need to build on. Jump on my team because I'm still strong. Ashe. It's important that we we not only stick together as a community, but kind of just find it in our own hearts and our own heads. So get involved in some way whatsoever. I I I I know that uh, our lives are busy, but this this is not going away until we do something about it. This will continue to happen if we allow it to happen. I saw a, a, a pretty powerful picture today, uh, somewhere on Facebook, where there were like, it was a drawing. There was thousands of people around this circle of like five individuals. And those five individuals represented our government. And those thousands of people represented us. And then the picture said, who's really in power? Mm. But if you think about it, that, that power is ours only when we take it. We have to stand up in many different ways. And yes, there are local things going on here in San Diego that you can get involved with that are connected to these bigger national names that you know got the press and things like that. Um, uh, we have the 182.5 cases, the, the gang injunctions that are uh, have these young men in jail. Some of them are out on bond, but um, uh, it could potentially put these men in jail for life. And, and if something like this gets passed, it means that if I'm documented as a gang member, for whatever reason, San Diego police decide to document me as a gang member, and something happens because of that gang, I can be charged for it whether I know about it or not. It's an unconstitutional law. It's something that needs to be repealed here, in, here in California. But we have men, black men, only black men, that they're Bonnie Dumanis is trying to use this as her test case. She's testing with people's lives. So it's things like this in Proposition 47, the same office. That law has been passed. And yet, Bonnie Dumanis' office is sitting on these people that are now free. Uh, the law says that if you, if, you had, if you got caught with weed or some theft and it was under like a thousand dollars or something like that, it's a misdemeanor now instead of you know, a felony. Because people get caught up in stuff that, you know, they, they can't, our kids get caught up in stuff and things like that. Um, so the law says that they're free, but eight, these 18,000 petitions that were filed by our public defender are just being kind of sat on by our district attorney. We need to stand up and say, hey, get to work. Then there's these curfew sweeps that are victimizing our youth and putting them in the system it's almost from straight from high school to the system back to jail and so it, it's you have to understand there are there are things that in in this in this system here in San Diego locally that are destroying us um, in uh, as uh, an oppressed people folks that are in poverty situations definitely uh, black and, and brown um, we have to like kind of come together and, and really fight these things so find a way to get involved find a way to get involved if you're standing around and being silent you're automatically helping the other side if you're standing around and you're not doing nothing but you get angry about it you're looking on facebook and you're putting a comment on facebook that's not involvement <laughs> you got to get involved wednesday at two o'clock the san diego police department is going to be releasing their data um, at the uh, Public Safety and Livable Neighborhoods Committee. If you, it's downtown. Anybody's welcome to come, but you need to come and represent your community. And guess what the data's going to say? That racial profiling is still a problem. The ACLU released this data months ago. I knew about this months ago. They're just going to tell us what we already know. Racial profiling is still a problem, especially here. So you have to get involved got to let your voice be heard. If you don't, then don't complain about it when it happens again. <laughs>